Recently, I was watching one of HITC7's videos about French football and why their teams don't do well in Europe. It was a good video, as most of them are on that channel. However, one of the main arguments they used for why French teams struggled, I had a bit of a problem with. First of all, let's just mention the fact that it is true, French teams seem not to do that well in European competitions. Generally, in Europe, there is a classification of the Big Five Leagues, made up of the biggest five Western European countries, England, Germany, Spain, Italy, and France. All of these countries have pretty big population sizes and all have well-developed economies, and therefore you'd expect that their football leagues would be some of the best in Europe. And that bears out in the UEFA coefficients at least. However, when it comes to European titles won and finalists in European competitions, the other four countries dwarf France in these metrics and even Portugal and the Netherlands better them in both wins and appearances. A French team has only won the Champions League once. They've never won the Europa League. And even if we use the Cup Winners' Cup, again, they only have one win. So why does a country with such a large population, which has a great pedigree for producing some of the greatest players of all time, and has had a lot of success as a national team as well, struggle to produce European club winners? The argument brought up by HIT7s I had an issue with was the idea that unlike the other big four leagues and both Portugal and the Netherlands, there are no super clubs that have been dominant for large periods of time in the French league. The argument being that France hasn't had a super club until maybe right now with PSG, and so there's never been the appeal for the best players of the world to go to a French club before the investment into PSG, and therefore they could never dominate on the European stage. The problem with this argument is that whilst it's kind of true from the macro perspective, as the best team in France has changed a lot and a lot more than the other countries, there has absolutely been stretches of time where one French team has been dominant. And interestingly, these teams are often the ones who have ended up being the French teams that made it to European finals. So let's take a look at those teams then, figure out why they didn't win the European Cup or Champions League, and also figure out why they weren't able to establish themselves as a dominant European force. From there, maybe we can establish why the French teams have struggled in Europe. Let's start with the beginning of European competitions, and that's the 1950s. And in the 1950s, the best French team was undoubtedly Rims. They won five titles in eight years and actually went to two of the early European Cup finals. The reason that they couldn't win though was basically because they came up against perhaps the most dominant side in European football history, the 1950s Real Madrid team that won the first five European Cups. This wasn't anything against Rams, they just came up against a super team. There is no shame in losing to them. In fact, during this stretch, they were almost certainly the second best European side. But where did it go wrong for them from there? Why weren't they able to convert this strong side into an everlasting French dominance? Well, it seems most likely it has to do with their manager, Albert Bateau, who led Rems through this very successful period as both a player and manager. He retired after the 1963 season, and as we've seen with Alex Ferguson, losing a successful manager can be difficult to replace. But for Rems, it went even worse, as in the first season after his departure, they were relegated to the second tier. This relegation saw a complete exodus of almost all the talented players they had collected, and so all of their work was completely undone, and they'd never be a dominant force in French football ever again. Moving on to the 60s and 70s, the next dominant force to emerge was Saint-Étienne, who in the 10 seasons from 1966 to 76 won seven league titles. At the end of this stretch too, they appeared in the European Cup final, but again, they came up against an absolute titan, the 1970s Bayern Munich team, led by Franz Beckenbauer and Gerd Müller, by the time of the 1976 final, had just won the past two European Cups and had established themselves clearly as Europe's best side. But still, Saint-Étienne gave them a game, losing 1-0 in the game which they dominated for the most part. Again, a French team got unlucky in the final, but why did Saint-Étienne not go on to dominate either? Well, after this crushing defeat, they wouldn't be as dominant, but they would still be one of the top sides in France and win the title again in the 1980-81 season. However, Saint-Étienne came into trouble in 1982, when it was found that their president, Roger Rocher, had been involved in a financial scandal, leading to his jailing and the club's massive downfall, in which they got relegated and again would have to start from scratch. A very similar story exists for the next contender as well, Marseille, who won five straight league titles from 1988 to 1993. This was also the French team that did win the Champions League title in 1993, a 1-0 win over AC Milan. This was it. This was the time for a French team to become a footballing superpower. And what happened? In 1994, it was found out their president, Bernard Tappé, 
was involved with a match-fixing scandal in the French League game in 1993, and so their title was stripped from that year and Marseille were relegated to the second division automatically. And once again, all of their good players that got them to that point quickly up and left, and they couldn't build upon their greatest achievement. Then we finally come to Lyon, and with Lyon we can start to get what I think is the real problem. See, Lyon won seven league titles in a row. This is an incredible feat that is a French record, but to put it into perspective, no English club has ever won four in a row. So to win seven in a row from 2001 to 2008 is a crazy achievement. But Lyon never really got close. They never even reached a final during this run. So what went wrong here if they were so dominant in the French league? Well, I think this is the real reason French teams have struggled, because by the 2000s, football had become a European game. Transfers between the different leagues was common, and the culture of which clubs were dominant in European football had already been established. And so Lyon, while successful domestically, were still a selling club to the bigger European leagues. The likes of Karim Benzema, Michael Essien, Florent Malouda and Mamadou Diara were all nurtured at the club and then sold on to another European rival for a high transfer fee, ripping out the spine of each successful Lyon side. This was the real problem at this point. France had missed the boat. Those teams that had came before had a chance to establish themselves as a European giant, but for one reason or another had failed to do so. No one dreams of playing for Marseille or Saint-Étienne over Real Madrid or Manchester United. And so that left French football in a state with no super teams until the investment in PSG and no chance really of competing for the top European titles. And so that's where that argument kind of falls apart. It's not that France didn't have any domestic superpowers, it's that those domestic superpowers couldn't translate it into European success for one reason or another. But then the argument also has another problem. Sure, it might explain the reasons a French side can't win the Champions League, but what about the Europa League? That's a secondary competition designed specifically for teams that can't compete with the biggest European clubs. Why can't a French team win that competition? Well, find out next time in part two.